this might be a small group of people taking an issue to CASA to go against the post office. But if, if the smallest decision is made, it could have huge repercussions for the post office. So you can understand why, why they are are trying to be very hesitant here, which is quite worrying for you. Well, uh, we would like ICASA to do its job properly. And if it takes a little bit longer yeah. to do the job properly, uh, that is in our interest. Because what we don't want uh, ICASA to do uh, is uh, to rush the matter, to make procedural errors which open up the door uh, to appeals uh, and, and, and to, to challenges uh, to, to ICASA's action. So we have every interest to ensure that ICASA does its job meticulously uh, and that the uh, ruling that it finally makes is not challengeable. Is, so this, is this the only um, uh, complaint uh, through a cast about the post office? Because, I, I mean, I, I would imagine there would be more. You know, if you were to go to Hello Peter, you will see thousands and thousands of right. complaints and against the post office. I mean, uh, everywhere uh, you go, you will see complaints. Yeah, to our knowledge, uh, I'm not aware of other companies or publishers or organizations that are lodging a complaint. Uh, we are heavily dependent on the post office for our postal deliveries, as are, as are the other 10 publishers that have joined us in this uh, action. Uh, uh, we have actually, uh, we, we've all joined together to take a joint action to, because we're all in the same uh, vulnerable position. Uh, and of course it helps share the, the, the legal costs, which are very significant. Uh, uh, you know, what we're asking from ICASA has very far-reaching consequences. Yes, uh, it, it affects uh, you know a state-owned enterprise, a multi-billion rand operation, yeah. which has an exclusive license for the delivery of postal services in South Africa, and we're asking ICASA to review this, and to possibly take away the license, or to allow other licensees to come in so that it's no longer an exclusive monopoly, and. Remember that the, the South African Post Office is an organization under administration at the moment. It's effectively being administered by the Treasury uh, and responsible to the Deputy President, Sir Ramaphosa. Uh, and, and, and so uh, we're hoping... Mr. Fixit. Uh, Mr. Fixit, the de facto Prime Minister of South Africa, who's sitting with this and many other uh, operational issues, including the ESCOM issue, the SAA issue. Uh, these are all on his shoulders. And he just released some hostages from China. <laughs> Almost every problem of South Africa at an operational level uh, falls on his shoulders. He is the de facto Prime Minister of South but Africa. But they don't want to see uh, the South African Post Office get dismantled and, and they, uh, the South African government would want the monopoly to remain. So this kind of uh, this challenge would be quite a threat to them, I suppose. We are hoping that ICASA is truly an independent regulatory body, not responsible to the executive, but responsible to the people of South Africa and we are looking to ICASA to fulfill its role to protect the public from a dominant monopoly uh, in the interests of the public. There are millions of South Africans who rely on the post office for postal services, people who do not have internet, that don't have email, that don't have laptop computers. In the townships, in the rural areas of South Africa, we're looking to ICASA to serve these people's interests and to make sure that if the post office cannot fulfill its mandate, either in full or partially, that it allows other people to take this role. It's not about protecting one's monopoly, it's about serving South Africa and the people of South Africa. And we're looking to ICASA to, 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 for that independence, uh, to make these decisions free of political interference by its shareholder. But now the post office will say to you, Chris, we've had these labor strikes mm -hmm. and, and, and now we're trying to get our house in order let us get our house in order, and, and we, it wasn't our fault, it was the, the labor strike's fault, it had nothing to do with management. That is the, the defense that, uh, that, that the post office has raised uh, in our application uh, to ICASA, the, the so-called defense of impossibility, uh, that, they, that force majeure strike action has meant that they are unable to fulfill uh, their, their, their obligations in terms of their license. I would argue different. Uh, I would argue that, uh, that ICASA for many years has had serious uh, uh, management issues. Uh, issues where uh, uh, President Zuma has referred uh, you know, the post office to the Scorpions for investigation for serious corruption. Uh, where the entire post office board of directors has resigned. Uh, and and, and m these management issues also manifest themselves in the area of labor relations. Uh, and, and my personal view is that uh, labor is generally 
uh, pretty apathetic, but if you neglect festering problems, if management neglect festering problems for many, many years, then labor becomes disaffected, aggrieved, and militant. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think it's completely disingenuous uh, to say that this is a labor problem. The problems at the labor level have been directly as a result of, of uh, the post office's mismanagement and the use uh, uh, of, uh, of, of, of labor brokers to provide temporary labor in permanent positions for many, many years at salaries one quarter of that of their permanent uh, employees, working side by side with their permanent employees, doing exactly the same work, but at quarter of the price, not provided with uniforms, not even provided with a tea allowance that is provided to their permanent employees. And this kind of mismanagement has resulted in a festering wound, a poisonous uh, labor environment, uh, which has resulted in strike after strike after strike without being resolved properly by management. So these comments aren't just something that you've sucked up. You've, you've read a, a, a report set from WITS. What was that about? Yeah, a, a study by uh, Professor David Dickinson uh, at WITS University in the Department of Sociology uh, has really highlighted the history of mismanagement of the post office and in particular, uh, uh, the labor relations problems, uh, the, the, uh, the, the whole labor broking scenario where up to 8,000 uh, post office employees were employed as casuals doing permanent work alongside permanent workers at one quarter uh, of the salary. And, th and this report, of course, is publicly available and really gives a detailed analysis uh, of the whole mismanagement of the labor scenario within the post office clearly uh, pointing out that this is a management problem and that management simply cannot uh, claim the defense of impossibility under these uh, conditions. Is there a future of the South African Post Office in South Africa and should there be? Look, we would like to see a South African Post Office that works. We would like to see a South African Post Office that can meet its slogan that says we deliver whatever it takes. That's what we want. We would love to be in a situation that we were before all these problems uh, many years ago where we could rely on the post office to deliver our magazines effectively and efficiently. But if they are not able to do this uh, role, uh, either in total or in part, we would like to see other companies uh, being allowed to, uh, to step in uh, to meet these obligations in the service of South Africa and its citizens and especially the poor.